As you're watching or listening to this episode, there are more than 2.5 billion people playing games at the moment. They are from all over the world. And the gaming industry is now looking to its next billion. Yes, you heard me right. Bear with me as I'm gonna take you through arguably one of the most important and innovative sectors in tech today. So to the viewers and listeners out there, welcome back to Inclusive Plug powered by Reconomy. This is episode 26. My name is Sabin. Just recently, I had a special conversation with two distinguished guests, Kristina Jovanovic, who is executive manager at the Serbian Games Association, and Matvi Suslenko, a game developer based in Ukraine. Let's take you through why the game development industry is important, especially in emerging Europe, such as the Western Balkans and the Eastern Partnership region. Well, first of all, it's one of the rare industries that combines both the creative side and the highly technical side. Uh, so I think it's it's literally the only industry where you have people from uh, marketing and HR and business developers closely cooperating uh, with artists, sound designers, writers. And then on the third side, of course, you have the developers, the tech artists. Uh, so all of them sort of have to learn how to speak a common language. And they give us this amazing product that everybody uses globally. And that's another thing I would say that sets apart the industry uh, from the rest. And also, um, it's one of the only industries where 90% of the workforce are avid users of the product. Uh, so it creates a, a really specific type of uh, atmosphere that encourages everyone to join. Uh, of course, it's one of the youngest industries uh, there are currently. And I really believe it's um, like the, the highlight and, and um, uh, future point of growth uh, for maybe some countries that don't necessarily rely so much on, on some uh, industries that are present in bigger countries. Uh, and I'm sure that Matthew, of course, uh, will agree as well. Currently, the video game industry is a technological giant uh, whose progress has only been accelerated in recent times due to the COVID pandemic, uh, putting it on one of the first places in the entertainment sector as a whole, um, accumulating people efforts, monetary assets and attention. And in my opinion, as a result, such concentration of people's needs and developers with the high quality skills uh, leads to new inventions in the fields of graphics, artificial intelligence, storytelling, uh, to impress the user. Uh, demand prompts to develop, uh, to stand out and attract attention of customers. Um, moreover, game development is a huge booster, not only for entertainment industry, uh, but, but for some related areas as well. Uh, for an instance, a virtual reality technology that is mainly associated with gaming uh, is used for educational purposes as well, also by architects and designers to present projects to clients. Uh, as an extra example, related to my motherland, while we are recording this podcast, some of the Ukrainian soldiers are training to operate weapons of anti-aircraft defense systems using VR, and it gives um, people of uh, different professions a crucial experience to use to use in work. And back to the VR topic and speaking about civil purposes, uh, VR is integrated into manufacturing, urban planning, um, etc. more and more. And um, it's worth mentioning that the Oculus Rift that is first commercially available headset for virtual reality became widely spread after a successful crowdfunding campaign. That means uh, I assume that uh, donations were sent mostly by gamers and game dev companies who saw potential in this technology. And uh, right after its release, um, there have been video games designed or ported for the Rift, like If Valkyria, The Walking Dead, Medal of Honor, and so on. And so on. So, in my opinion, I'm sure that it had a huge impact on uh, visual-related industries. Um, the expansion of game development sector, like, is is expected. Uh, um, to, to grow more and more, and uh, for example, there is an assumption that it will uh, it will expand to 321 billion by 2026. And in my opinion, we can already consider, for example, Eastern Europe as a force hub. Uh, for an instance, according to statistics from open sources, uh, Kyiv has a large number of game developers and publishers, roughly the same as Toronto or Paris or Stockholm, that are like can be heard uh, in discussion, in game, game development discussion, and many other cities are worth mentioning in terms of game development boom. Uh, Lviv in Ukraine, Krakow and Warsaw in Poland are huge in terms of game development and especially mobile game development. I'm related to 
Um, in addition, an opportunity to, to work remotely that is given by tech companies leads to ge geographical variety of employees. Offices in America, Europe, Canada, and United Kingdom and others are welcoming devs from uh, all over the world, definitely. So, um, yeah, my answer is that we, we can already consider some other hubs and it's widely spread uh, industry. Uh, continuing on Matthew's thoughts, I would say that a lot has changed after the pandemic. Uh, if you talked about remote work five years ago, uh, maybe it was the perk for some of the employees in some of the companies. But now it's really the standard because the majority of Serbian gaming companies, for example, haven't returned to the way things were before. Uh, everything is completely hybrid and you can get amazing talent and ideas from everywhere and work in amazing teams anywhere. Uh, so that's one of the things. Uh, the other one is that um, the tools that are being used are uh, being democratized slowly. Uh, you have completely uh, free tools such as Unreal Engine. And I think this has made it possible for uh, some indie teams and smaller studios to develop really amazing projects that have been ac accepted globally. Uh, and we see more and more studios opening up everywhere, as you mentioned, in the Western Balkans. Uh, Serbian games, for example, have been played uh, 350 million times uh, and or been downloaded or purchased uh, in 2021, which I think is amazing for a country so small. Uh, we always compare us, for example, uh, with Finland because it's the similar uh, amount of people working in the industry. But we, we are at the point where Finland was seven years ago. Uh, so now, uh, you know, together, you know, speaking with uh, colleagues from other industries such as here today, uh, we can maybe get a glimpse of what needs to be done uh, to to accelerate this progress even further. And I found out personally, and statistics from open sources confirm this, um, situation differs in world in general and in Ukraine in particular, according for, to survey by Dole, in which approximately 800 specialists participated in June 2022. The, the average uh, age of game dev specialists in Ukraine is 28 years old, quite, quite young. And 40, according to the statistics, 41% of game dev specialists have less than three years of experience and 20, uh, only 23% have been working in their specialty for more than five years. So speaking about world, uh, Zipia and Statista portals claim that average age for game developers overall in the world is uh, 40 years old. But all of our sources uh, agree, agree on the fact that the average age of game developers is decreasing year by year. Um, it seems to me that uh, there is a clear correlation with the increase in the number of courses, training videos, programs for novice developers, and, and the average age of specialists. Um, in addition to the fact that the demand for game developers is increasing more and more, uh, the easier it is to master the profession, the, the more people will try to do it and as soon as possible. So yeah, I, I, I clearly see such a correlation. I would say definitely uh, when the FGA first appeared, that was exactly five years ago, actually. Uh, we had um, sort of your common group at our meetups and, and get-togethers and uh, Ask Me Anything sessions and whatever. So these were the people that were already employed in the industry for five or ten years. So I would say 35 plus. Uh, but now, five years later, uh, this field has changed completely. Uh, we have programs for high school kids, for uh, students, and they ask us all the time what can they do to get in the industry easier, how, they, how can they prepare the portfolio. Uh, there's also the question of education, should it be more formal, more informal. Uh, so yeah, I think things have switched a lot. And also in the perception of the parents, uh, I think they're also a very important uh, group to address uh, because finally the gaming industry is um, uh, being looked at as really a, a serious and, and a great opportunity to develop your Talents, your skills, and as I mentioned, it's so diverse uh, that almost anyone can find uh, a place they want in the industry. And w Christina, what are some of the challenges in the industry besides the te technological aspect? Are soft skills lacking, like business development and marketing for the uh, gaming companies? Mm. Well, I wouldn't say for companies specifically, but more for indie teams and smaller studios that have only developed uh, recently uh, because they put a lot of their effort, and that's completely understandable, into working on the product. And sometimes they still think that uh, all you need to do is have a really, really, really good game and it's going to find its way to the audience. Uh, of course, now we know uh, that it's not true. You have to work on marketing and everything completely in parallel. Like as soon as you start development, we... Uh, 
we advise uh, our studios and teams and members to think about other things such as marketing, user acquisition, monetization, of course, uh, all of these uh, influences development. Uh, so I would say they are lacking this, uh, this biz dev knowledge. Uh, soft skills, of course, are something that you learn along the way. Uh, of course, financing is a huge problem for smaller teams as well still. Uh, for example, in Serbia, we don't have a fund that's available specifically for gaming studios. And we have seen the opening of these funds in uh, Italy, Germany, France. And we have seen that the number of games published has skyrocketed the year before the fund and after the fund. Uh, so I think this is something that each country, especially in the Eastern European region, should seriously consider. Um, and another thing, of course, is talent. Uh, only last year, uh, last year alone, Serbian industry needed 450 new people. Uh, and a uh, huge part of these are seniors and mediators, and it's extremely hard to find these. And I think it's going to be the number one problem in scaling companies, not just in Europe, but globally. It's, it's everyone's problem. With me is Jelena Antic, who is Intervention Manager at the German NGO Hilfe zu Selbsthilfe, which is an implementing partner to Helvetas in the frame of Reconomy which is a program of the Swedish International Development Cooperation Agency. Uh, the meteoric rise of the gaming industry is just getting started in emerging Europe, right? So our research, Jelena, shows that the game development sector in Serbia, for example, is one of the fastest growing niches of the Serbian IT industry. Can you tell us what kind of support Reconomy has been providing? Well, uh, as you said, uh gaming industry is really skyrocketing right now in Western Balkan and we saw that uh, as well in, during the pandemic. And uh, the vast majority of the gaming industry in Serbia and Western Balkan region uh, ma mainly consists of small businesses whose main market is outside of this region. But because of the absence of investors and publishers, most of these companies publish the games independently at their own expense. Uh, in case of Serbia, most of the members of the Serbian Games Associations are just starting to look into publishing and financing their projects, thus they lack the necessary array of spe specific business skills essential to develop and grow uh, the business. To address this issue of inadequate information and specific skills uh, when it comes to obtaining funding opportunities for small gaming enterprises, Serbia Games Associations hosted the first regional game, game funding bootcamp with the support from Reconomy. So last year, 68 people from more than 30 different companies and studios attended the bootcamp's 11 sessions and workshops. Uh, participants came from Serbia, North Macedonia, Croatia, uh, Montenegro, and Bosnia and Herzegovina. Each module featured several prominent lecturers, both local and internationals, uh, who are experts in the appropriate fields. Uh, modules covered insights into various funding options, such as publishing deals, crowdfunding, mergers and acquisitions, public funding, venture capital, angel funds, and so on. Uh, participants had the opportunity to learn more about topics such as administration, negotiation skills, pitching and presentation skills, business plan writing, and gain practical skills in all these areas. Everyone who participated in the bootcamp acquired critical knowledge and skills that they are now using in their business activity. So some participants already started to explore uh, these funding opportunities. Additionally, bootcamp participants cascaded this newly acquired knowledge throughout their companies to other employees as well. Uh, moreover, uh, Serbian Games Association is granting access to the bootcamp materials on their website and YouTube channel so that other gaming companies that didn't have a chance to participate in the bootcamp from Serbia and the region and they're interested to learn more about the funding opportunities, can go to this website and listen all lectures. One other positive side of 
the regional uh, initiatives is building the linkages and connections between similar organizations and individuals from the region. The regional cooperation among like-minded uh, organizations can increase the visibility of the sector in gaming companies on the global market and attract uh, more invest investments, ultimately leading to the greater uh, co competitiveness. Uh, one example is, for example, uh, Association Magda from uh, North Macedonia and companies from Bosnia and Herzegovina. Uh, then a part of this issue on how to stimulate the growth of the sector through various uh, opportunities of funding, the economy together with SGA looked at other areas of the industry that needs improvement. The growing game industry in Serbian region requires new skilled talents. But there is still a huge gap within, between supply and demand, which is having impact on the growth of small and medium-sized gaming enterprises and indie studios, but also on employment side. Uh, so our economy is further supporting the Serbian Games Association to create an online educational and job matching platform to popularize gaming and related industries as a viable career choice in order to close the skills gap in the labor market. The online platform will be connected uh, to the job websites of the Serbian Games Association. And in addition, the platform with, will feature several self-tests that will enable young people to evaluate their own skill set and use the data to make uh, informed decisions about the career they would like to aspire. The goal of this initiative is it's to educate young women and men about the various career opportunities available in the gaming industry. And through the platform, young people will gain in-depth knowledge what it's like to work in gaming teams and companies and connect them with industry leaders and potential employers. In return, companies will have access to a pool of interested individuals, allowing them to expand their talent base. At the end, it will result in a better match between employers and employees' ex expectations, ultimately leading to more productive jobs for young women and men. The platform will be launched latest by the end of the March this year, so stay tuned for more information. Thank you, Yelena. So it's the soft skills in business development and marketing of the game development sector that is constrained, right? As, as you probably also explained, most of the gaming companies are still at the low level of the income category and the slow business development and growth of the small gaming teams hinders the employment capacities. In other words, if the small gaming studios and teams could accelerate business growth, the revenue would increase and more people would be employed in the sector. But then the gaming industry has long been viewed as primarily for men and the people behind the scenes developing games are male dominated. This, this sector's attitude to gender is having and will increasingly have an more enormous impact on our future. While there is a trend that's promising, numbers indicate that the gaming industry is still a largely male dominated sector. That's why Reconomy, as you also said, Yelena, aims to facilitate creating better economic opportunities for jobs uptake and increased income for women as one of the main target groups. Let's check out what Kristina and Matvi had to say. It's truly an interesting topic. Uh, preparing for our conversation, uh, I dived into statistics, not to get found it. Um, according to Game Developer Survey in July 2021, uh, it was found that uh, uh 61 percent of respondent game developers were men while uh, only 30 were women which was up from 21 in 2017. Uh, therefore there is a noticeable increase in the uh, female game developers number well since we're on the topic of statistics <laughs> just uh one bit of info about serbia we are actually officially by the egdf annual report uh, the first country in europe when it comes to percentage of women employed in the in the gaming workforce it's at 30 percent uh, so this is something we're very proud of, uh, but of course it's not evenly distributed among all the professions. So of course, as always, you will find uh, more women employed in uh, marketing, HR, HR roles like that, and less, of course, in development and median in the art sector. Uh, 
so we really, uh, as an association, do a lot of events to promote um, inclusivity and diversity. Uh, we are having actually one, um, it's called Asia Empowers this March, uh, where we will have all sorts of different workshops for different age groups. So we want to talk to girls from high school, to, to girls from university, to girls who are just planning to enter the industry, and even those who are in the industry, for example, how to uh, better negotiate for a higher salary and things like that. Uh, so I think it's important to find where are the bottlenecks, uh, where are the parts where we are losing, so to speak, uh, girls on this uh, funnel to, to the industry. For example, out of 100 girls that are avid gamers and that enter sort of a technical high school, uh, only 50 go on to the university, only 30 go on to the master's degree, only 20 uh, decide to apply for a gaming position. So we all need to figure out uh, what are these points that are stopping them or discouraging them and try to reverse it. Thank you, Christina. And Matve, uh, how has the Russian invasion of Ukraine affected the work that you are doing? Uh, Russian invasion undoubtedly affected the work and uh, I do and uh, my life in general. We we have to uh, uh, adapt to manifestations of Russia's inhuman policy and actions. Um, a working schedule surely began to be affected by by drone and missile attacks launched by the Russians. Sometimes for me, it was necessary to hide in shelters for a long time, I mean, hours uh, uh, due to the closest distance to the areas of explosions and the large number of launched missiles, missiles and uh, drones. And uh, also, also the, the large problem, um, the, the constant destructions uh, of the energy infrastructure by Russians created the need to use batteries uh, such as EcoFlow. I, <laughs> I bought one to, to come up with this issue and um, um, to support to support the power supply of the laptop, router, and other important devices, um, because sometimes there was no electricity for several days, uh, and uh, the, the closer or um, city or village, uh, um, because uh, a lot of developers uh, live not not in big cities but but in smaller ones in the villages, and the closer city or village to Russian forces, the worse the situation. Uh, some regions uh, are existing without electricity and water supply for months, and uh, uh, it's impossible to restore um, related technical networks, only completely rebuild them after victory without being affected by constant challenges. Uh, speaking about the internet, internet service providers are currently adapting to lack of electricity by establishing a, a new fiber optic connection instead of the, the old one, or using batteries in houses to keep the existing network of two wire cables running even, even after a power outage. Um, for adaptation purposes, uh, like I, so, uh, as I said, I bought an EcoFlow that can supply an electricity for, for my laptop and uh, some other devices for the whole working day. Uh, bought a couple of power bonds and changed uh, an internet provider to the one uh, that supplies in, uh, the internet even after a power out outage. Um, at the same time, I, I noticed with, with some kind of uh, pride that none of my colleagues uh, from the company I'm currently working in missed the deadline even even on the most difficult days. Um, we use co-working spaces, internet cafes, uh, or uh, simply change our location to, to stay in touch. And um, over time, uh, you begin to understand that it's nothing. You understand that you should appreciate simple things, uh, like relatives that are alive, the opportunity to see the light, and not constantly hide in basements. And uh, the lack of electricity, heating, and the internet cannot be compared with, with the losses. Uh, so so we, we we adapt, we we fight against the uh, issues we come come across, and uh, yeah, I, I want to just uh, express an incredibly big thank you to to army, to people, to countries that help us uh, in in this fight. And I honestly believe in Ukrainian victory, and I'm sure it will it will come because I see how many great people all uh, all over the world, Ukrainians, not Ukrainians, uh, uh, are putting effort to make it happen. For a long time, the gaming industry has coalesced around three major hubs – Japan, North America, and Western Europe. Publishers from the United States, Western Europe, and Japan were the largest and most powerful, taking what appeared to be an unquestionable lead in this emerging, booming industry. In recent years, however, this has changed. The industry has also become a career choice for some young people. It's offering new ways to make a living that didn't exist 10 years ago. 
Developers from emerging Europe like the Western Balkans and the Eastern Partnership region have stormed the market, creating some of the world's most innovative and best-selling games, creating a phenomenon that brings in not just export revenue, but boosts the cultural recognition of an entire region. Reconomy supports in striving to achieve regional collaboration by increasing global competition, undertake new joint acquisitions of more complex products results by applying new technologies and act as a key driving force of the regional startup ecosystem. This way, we enhance the integration of sustainable development principles into regional development practices, creating additional job opportunities and increased income on individual and private sector levels.